Inside this chemical bath, we've been waiting two days to get these quantum eyes. At long last. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. So today is finally the day we get to move bases. We got all the rest of the preparations in place last episode for the tier three rocket. The last bases we need to make is the emitter, along with the EV sensor. And these items we have to assemble in the IV assembling machine. Oh, the anticipation. Oh, <laughs> this has been such a long time coming. Here we go. And we get our rocket control computer. And the quest. And the control computer is the final piece of this puzzle. I hope anyway. <laughs> I hope there's not anything else we're missing for this. We first of all need to unlock our schematic, which opens up the page for the tier three rocket. Let's see if I remember the recipe here. Uh, this looks correct, but I think we're missing four pieces here. I wonder what those are. This was a slight oversight here. <laughs> okay, two more heavy duty plate in tier two and two tier one boosters. Well, that was a bit of an anti-climax, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, let me get the rest of the things we need for this. All right, take two, this time with the two boosters and the two platens. Oh baby, <laughs> tier three rocket. Let's just double check to make sure we've unlocked the prerequisite quests in the IV tab. Obviously our destination here is the asteroid belts, which apparently we can get an aquada in. I don't think we'll be staying very long, we just need to basically dip in, grab some asteroid rock for the quest, and we'll go back later for the materials. All right, now that is a cool looking rocket, don't you think? We have to give this our LMP fuel. Yeah, eight cells takes us to full capacity. Let's not wait anymore, let's do this. Oh, check out our lander this time. <laughs> We're in a little like capsule thing. Yeah, this place is always really, really cool to visit. And we landed in relative safety as well. Ain't of surprising. Hello, creeper. <laughs> yeah, look at this place. This is so cool. And you got the asteroids floating about as well. That's a really nice touch. But as we mentioned, we are only here for the quest right now. We need to pick up Asteroid Rock and Asteroid Rock. <laughs> Looks like there's three different variations. Is this the second one? Yeah. And this one should be our quest. Apparently that was the wrong one. <laughs> I only see two variants of this. Maybe it's on the inside of the asteroids. Ah, this is it right here. 1132 is the block we're looking for. Instant quest pop, nice. Well, I would call that a very brief and successful mission. It's time for the return journey. So we are back in a very rainy overworld here. But where we're going, it's not going to be raining. We have a choice. We can either pick the Garden World, or we can pick the Void Dimension. We can only pick one of these options though, but we are going to go for the Void. Now then, where do we place the portal, is the thing. <laughs> Before we, I mean, we're going to obviously move pretty much everything here. Not all, not all today, by the way. This is going to be a monumental task we're about to undertake. So I do want to have this in a place where it's easily accessible, but I don't think you can pick it up once you place it down. So I also don't want to just place it randomly. <laughs> I think we're going to place it right here. Yeah, right here. So welcome to the location of our new base. As you can see by the time on the left, it is always day here, despite the dark sky. So it means that we can place solar panels and have them activated at all times. We also don't get any mob spawn, despite the light level on the ground. And we don't have, any, have to dig any terrain. <laughs> However, we do need blocks to build our base with. So I do have some plans on the block palette, and uh, I'm wondering actually if all those saplings the loot bags gave us can help us here. We are looking for Sakura wood, which I would quite like to use in the new base. Yeah, so we're going to go with these planks, which I think look quite nice. We are going to be keeping the light concrete. I was kind of put off by this block, but actually I really like this, especially in combination with the bit block. It's not something I thought would work in the beginning, but yeah, I quite like the combination. These lathe blocks and layer blocks though, uh, they're going to be gone. We're no longer going to be using these. 
there is a reason I didn't use white in previous builds, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I can't make it work. <laughs> but these layer blocks, actually, we will be keeping, but we're going to switch it to 15 instead of 2. So it's going to be this variant you can see right here. Yeah, this one. And the planks, concrete, bit blocks, and the final block is going to be Aegon. So yeah, this is going to be our main block palette. I would at this early stage like to think about lighting as well. No way we're going to have torches everywhere. So what sort of lighting options do we have? Well, we could go for these white lamps that we have been using, but I don't really think they would fit in with the new palette. Another option is these arc lamps, which have a higher light level than regular torches. These are not exactly the cheapest things though. These two, these do take batteries and dash plates, along with the inverted white lamps. It is an option though. Either that or we just disguise all of the lighting with the painting machine. Basically, we can make the Ender I.O. painting machine and then just disguise, for example, concrete blocks as glowstone. And we can light up the building that way. So, yeah, I'm still undecided on the lighting part, but I'm pretty confident this is the blocks we're going to be using. So to that end, I've taken some time and partially automated most of these blocks. The lathe was probably the easiest one, it's just a matter of changing the circuit number. The bit block here we already had, although the wool here is not automated, we're still just manually shearing sheep. But every recipe gives you 8 and we have a huge backlog worth. I think there's another full drawer in our storage room. The Aegon automation here is similarly kind of manual. So the thing we need for this is light grey dye, which obviously is a mix between grey and white dye. The grey dye we can just get one to one with pile of ashes, which is all over the place in the nether. And we combine that with bone meal, which is also from bone blocks in the nether. So yeah, we get so many of each of those resources. So the concrete we have automated over here next to the LV machines. We just give this the input items, so stone dust, calcite, quartz sand and clay dust. Along with a little bit of water, that then goes into a fluid solidifier, which used to be for the lathe over there. And then into the drawer, and we have almost a full drawer actually of concrete. The Sakura wood though is a little bit more interesting actually. So I decided to go with this farming station from Ender.io and uh, I don't regret it at all. <laughs> this thing is super broken. It's been on like two and a half minutes or so and this drawer filled up. So yeah, I, I emptied it all and cut it all down into planks. The only thing with this machine is we do have to provide it with an axe. So I, I've just given it my own lumber axe here which is more, almost unbreakable. It still has to be leveled a bit for more modifiers so that we can actually make it unbreakable, but more or less unbreakable. And this is just run at LV with a little bit of a battery buffer in there. So yeah, now that we have tons and tons of blocks, which I have put in this upgraded backpack, it's really all just a matter of actually implementing this base now. So I'm going to do a bit more building and try to flesh out at least the start of this base. And we'll come back and see how much of the old base we can get moved over today. Alright, so update number one on this base. It's uh, coming along quite nicely, actually. I've had to rebuild several things, so yeah, not flawless, but <laughs> it's actually looking not too bad. But hopefully you can see what I'm going with here. So there was a few things I wanted to keep in mind while I was designing this place. One of them is that I wanted to make sure I didn't build myself into a corner, so a really common trap that I always fall into when building bases is to put like a cap on the end of each wall and leave yourself not enough space to build. But like here, for example, we can X out the front here. We're also going to have two other branching paths on each side of this main central area. And then we've got two more off to the side here. So that was the first main thing I wanted to keep in mind is not to box ourselves in. I also wanted to build it in a way that we could integrate applied energistics as that is going to be basically the focal point of the base. It's going to be the main design consideration. So our terminals, I want to be easily accessible here. We'll probably end up having multiple terminals around the base, but this is something that worked very well in Divine Journey. And then the ME controller I'm thinking we place right around here. And I also want to come up with a cable and standard for this as well. So I think we're going to run ME cable along the center of all of these paths. And then perhaps we'll also have item conduits or fluid conduits mixed in there as well. But I think I do actually want to build down and we'll build some sort of a basement on the underneath of this as well. So yeah, I'm thinking we go down three blocks and then somehow we build this out. Maybe we'll put some sort of a curve on it as well. That could look pretty cool from the outside.
So one of the issues I was thinking about actually with the old base is we kind of built up the space and then filled it with the machines. And that led us into a situation like what we have over here, where it's kind of a little bit of a spaghetti mess. <laughs> Especially underneath, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen under here. And a similar thing sort of happened around all of our machines over here. So we're going to try and avoid that this time by first of all filling it out with the machines and all the blocks that we're going to need for functionality and then we'll design aesthetics around that. So speaking of functionality, I'm having a hard time actually deciding what we should move first. I mean we can't really do anything without power, but we're not really producing any power as it stands at the moment. We do have our nuclear reactor, but I think we're going to keep that here at least for the next episode. And instead we'll set up an area for the machines. So to build out our infrastructure anymore, obviously we're going to need circuits, we're going to need machine parts wires, cables, all that sort of stuff. And rather than continue to do it manually, I think we want to set up a machine room and we'll have Applied Energistics all craft it for us. Oh yeah, by the way, these are only the chisel blocks. <laughs> We're not that rich yet that we can afford this many ME controllers. But this is basically going to be the setup and uh, I'll try to explain it when we set this up. We're going to do the same setup as we had in Divine Journey with the main controller and the subnet. And then all the cables will run off of this subnet here. So yeah, Applied Energistics All Crafting, and uh, I just want to show you guys, look at the recipe for the Molecular Assembler. Not only does it take 4 Titanium, Formation Cores, which is logic processors, it also takes an EV assembling machine for one of these things. I mean, <laughs> that is absolutely insanity. So it's safe to say we're not going to be having Molecular Assembler trees anytime soon. I would however like to craft some interfaces so that we can at least get some machine crafting going. This isn't quite as bad, this only requires them an EV machine casing. So lots and lots of titanium and formation cores. Oh, this is going to be so much gold as well. How is our supply of gold looking? Well we have 8 ingots there, that's no good. I do think there is some more in the ore processing chest though. Yeah we have a few stacks here and plenty more ingots here. Okay that should be enough for today at least. So the idea is that we want to have the machines available to basically craft the applied energistics materials. So I think we'll want a bending machine for plates, probably a few assemblers, we'll need one for the cable, although I know you can buy this actually, a couple of you guys mentioned that. We'll also want a wire mill, and also the things for the processors as well, so we'll need an assembler, a fluid extractor, and also a couple of forming presses as well. All of these machines we're going to do at HV mostly, although we may have a a few transformers in the mix in there as well and we'll just steal some of these MV machines. Especially for things like the assemblers which are still very expensive no matter which tier you use. But we do have a decent amount of stainless steel that we can use here. There's uh, plenty more in this drawer as well. I did also make up some more HV circuits. So as for the power for this thing we're just going to keep using combustion generators for now. This is still just a transitionary period so we can always disassemble these when, when we're finished with them and we eventually centralise all the power. So yeah we'll need a few more combustion generators. Only one? That's kind of the problem with AE, you don't really know exactly how many materials you have in here. So shift clicking can be somewhat problematic. Hello there. <laughs> that is an infernal mob as well. Let's not mess with him. Alright, so we got our four combustion generators, one bending machine. We are just going to make new machines for most of these things. I do kind of want to leave that set up intact for now. So we will obviously want some batteries for this setup and I'm thinking we just go for the energy crystals rather than the lithium batteries that we're using here. Lithium is 1.6 million pair and I think the energy crystals are only 1 million pair. But we have more energium than we do lithium so I think we'll go for these ones. So we will need the four forming presses. I'm considering going a lower tier for these though. This is going to be so much electrum and we're kind of running out of gold. Although if we go LV we're also out of copper. Uh, I guess, and if we go MV we're out of MV circuits. Maybe we just bite the bullet and go for the HV ones, right? Let's see if we can get four of these things. There's two. A few more electric pistons, and can we get our fourth? Yes, we can. Four advanced forming presses, the high voltage battery buffer, and an assembling machine. Alright, that's about enough machines to get us started at least. I have also started planning out the room that these are going to be situated in. So I think the idea is that we have our machines along this wall. Interfaces will either be below or above, and we do power in the back. Ah yes, we are also going to need a lathe, and we're missing another more, which I suspect is because of Electrum. Oh actually, I almost forgot, we can centrifuge Electrotine. We have somewhere in the region of like 4000 of this dust, but every 8 gives you a piece of Electrum, so uh, yeah, we'll do some of this just to save some of the gold. Aha, one more advanced lathe. Actually, this could be the first lathe at HV. So other than the machines and the interfaces, which actually we've still, we've still yet to craft, we also need some crafting units for the crafting storages and co-processing units. 
Let's see what the damage is here. Okay. <laughs> LV circuits, processors, and titanium. All right, I think we have most of the materials. We'll start off with eight of these things, if we can. Uh, maybe 12. Or 16? No, 13. <laughs> That's all we're getting. We have no more LVs. Actually, you know what? We're getting a couple more AE loot bags. I didn't realize there was two tiers of these either. Somehow we managed to pick up this good one, as opposed to the basic. So we are going to make up a few more fortune books. Unfortunately, we're out of the chases, which requires the... What is the Sealed sticks? Which need seed oil, and I know there is a way that you can bypass this step with Thumbcraft, but we're not quite there yet. And I don't really want to detour into Thumbcraft that hard. <laughs> we have so much on our plate right now. We do, however, have lots of levels we can pull from. I believe it's 40 per Fortune 3 book. Well, actually, we can make 3 with the 40 levels, so it's not that bad. Oh, but the good loot bag can't be just upgraded with the item processor tier 1. This has to be tier 2, which takes the engineering and this item circuit tier 2, which looks like it's just diamond instead of gold. And this takes the EV assembling machine. I think we should be able to manage this, though. Actually, that's not true. We need an EV laser engraver for this, which is going to be five workstations. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this recipe here for the engraved diamond crystal chip takes EV. And this is required actually for the 16k and above. So we're going to need this eventually. The only thing is this does take the rest of our HP circuits. So we're going to be left with none today. I think it might be worth doing though. I really want to see what's inside this really good loot bag, especially if we enchant it as well. Oh, and we will need another quantum eye for this as well, won't we? Well, we should have the raid on. It's been hours, so... <laughs> this thing has been running basically constantly, so... Oh yeah, seven buckets of raid on here. After an extremely long detour, we have <laughs> we have our AE loot bag enchanted. Alright game, don't let me down. These AE loot bags have been good to us thus far. Let's not stop now. Ah, <sighs> Was that really all there was? There's no inventory desync or anything? <laughs> wow. Well, we... <laughs> We have an EV laser engraver at least. Oh well, back to the task at hand. Alright guys, well, it's been some time again. I did, again, get very unlucky with the loot bags. <laughs> However, we do have our 17 ME interface. It was meant to be 16, but I guess I crafted an extra. We also missed the quest for it. Well, we didn't miss it, but we don't have the prerequisites yet. So the interface quest is over here, but I mean, we'll be making many more of these things. So I've also went ahead and set up an ME controller here. We're not going to be doing any P2P today because, well, we're out of circuits and P2P takes circuits. So we're just running a dense cable off the bottom of the ME controller. As simple as it gets, really. And then this just splits three ways. The first way goes to our terminals over here. And I've also moved over a ME drive. Although this won't be the location of our drives. I think we're going to have a full drive bay uh, opposite this, maybe. So I'm thinking over in this space, we're going to have the crafting CPUs. So coprocessors will allow you to craft m multiple items at the same time using the same CPU. And the craft and storage is allowed to craft more items at once. So we have 1Ks and 4Ks on each of these things. All of them just connected with glass cable onto the main line. I think. 
No, I didn't hook them up underneath. <laughs> that would help a lot, three. There we go. And we want to keep nice straight lines of ME cable as well. No more spaghetti under here. So yes, it is a bigger investment up front. We need to make more cables, but it's going to save us in the long run. Oh, and we got an achievement. What was that, eight channels? Yeah, reach eight channels on the network. So yeah, obviously we can only run 16 channels since we're coming out of a dense cable. In fact, you can see on the tooltip there we're using eight channels out of this. The face of the controller can handle 32, but the fact that we're going from a dense cable into a glass cable means that we can only handle eight off of each of these things. Eventually though, this will be swapped out to a dense cable and, and then again upgraded to P2P. But yeah, over here at our machines, we just have our battery buffer, which I forgot to grab the batteries from. Combustion generators. The interfaces I think we're actually going to put below the machines. Just so it's easier to wire up from the bottom. Something like that. So when we request a pattern, which we are actually still to make. I haven't even looked at the, the recipe for the patterns here. Uh, aluminium plates, glowstone plates, quartz glass, and charge service. Actually, this is not too bad. Yeah, we'll have to make a few patterns, but we'll go over that later on. Anyways, Applied Energistics is going to send the item from the interface into the forming press, for example. But we also want all these machines pointing down. And we want to enable item auto output on these as well. And the last crucial step for this is to give it a little tap with the screwdriver. And this means that it can input and output from the same side. If we were not to do this, then the interface wouldn't be able to send items in here since we have the machine output pointing down. We will also have to provide power to the ME system itself, so we're going to make another combustion generator. Although this is not a long-term solution, I think uh, the ME system is going to require quite a bit of power. And in fact, this may not even be sufficient enough. Mm, how do we want to do this to begin with? I think actually we're just going to place this right here. <laughs> I really just want to get this up and running today, and we'll optimize tomorrow. And in fact, I think next episode is going to be a live stream, so if you'd like to tune into that, feel free. I would love to see you there. It will be here on YouTube and it will be 12 until 5 GMT. So I also uh, separated out the super tank full of cetane, which we're going to grab over to the void. I'm not sure, by the way, if we're going to be switching our cetane over to the void or if we just leave it here. I haven't really decided on a solution for power, but I do know that we're going to be switching to large combustion engines. So actually, you know what? I think we're going to grab all of our ME system here. It's going to be a slow transition, but yeah, eventually we want everything over there. So yeah, something like this should work. We flip this on. We got power, okay. So yeah, this is just the, the toggle bus on the top of the energy acceptor. When we power this, it allows the power to go through the glass cable and power the ME controller. So now we should see all of our items actually in these terminals. Yes, awesome. And do we have a spare pump? Not an EV one. <laughs> we don't need an EV pump for this. I think an LV one will do. And we can place this on the side of the super tank here of C10. And then just run some potent pipe along. And also one on this combustion generator. This line will only last probably a day or two, I hope. But yeah, I don't really want to make too many t uh, temporary setups in this new place. I want to make everything as concrete as possible. And we're out of potent pipe. I think we can recycle some from the old base though. Alright, so I hooked up all the fluid pipes. Let's see about getting these patterns now. So, the quartz glass is most easily made in the blast furnace. It's like under a second per recipe, so... I think we'll maybe aim for like half a stack. Assuming we can get enough glowstone. For the half stack of blank patterns. So now we can come over to our pattern terminal, which is actually backwards. I <laughs> Pattern should be on the left, at least for me. It's really just personal preference, but yeah, pattern is on the left for me. <laughs> interface on the right, crafting terminal in the middle. So now we can start to encode all the patterns for the interface, besides the ones that are actually crafting patterns. We can do the, the plate recipe though. We don't want any substitutions and we just encode. Same with the assembling machine, although this does take a circuit so we'll have to bear that in mind. I think this is the only one in the processing chain though that does take a circuit, but eventually we'll have one assembler per, cir per circuit number. The glass cables, oh this can also be done in an assembler, so yeah we'll just we'll use the assembler recipe. Let's see what else can we do here. Oh yeah the processors, the logic processors. So before we put the patterns in the interface actually we're going to establish a naming scheme. It's good to do this early before you have any patterns in here. So the first one here, I guess, can be silicon. This will need the press, and then we rename the interface. Oh, I need levels. I think we'll standardize the naming as machine name. Maybe without a space, actually. 
and then tier of the machine and then whatever circuit or fluid is inside. But in this case, because it's a Foreman press, it's going to be for silicon. And we'll do the same for each of these. So now when we look under the interface terminal, we can see everything has, has got a name. And we can easily insert the patterns this way rather than having to do it, go over to the interface and find it. We are still missing a couple of recipes in here though. Like for example the recipe for the Certus Quartz Rod, which unfortunately has to be in the lathe. We can't do this in like the extruder for example, which would be much faster. Yeah, kinda strange. But anyways, this does also give us a byproduct here of small piles of Certus Quartz dust. We're gonna take this out of the processing pattern. It doesn't really matter that much, it's just that I don't really want small Certus Quartz dust to be requestable. I mean, not that we're gonna be requesting small Certus Quartz dust, but just to be consistent. <laughs> so that goes in the lathe. And I think that's us for now. All right, let's try this out. Can we request titanium? In fact, let's take these all out. We're missing titanium. <laughs> it's all in the drawer, yeah. There's going to be a lot of back and forth. Okay, there is your titanium. Now can you craft us? Like, 16? Okay, it says it's crafting. Something is stuck, though. Do you work? Oh, the only machine we didn't plug in. Nice. <laughs> yes, awesome. And it should all be going back to the interface, which should clear it off on the ME system. And we got 16 titanium. The first autocraft. <laughs> In fact, the first autocraft should have been in a, a crafting table, but I don't know. We're doing things a bit different here. But with that, I think this is also a good point to wrap up the episode. We're getting a little bit long today. I'm having a bit too much fun with this, though. <laughs> but we will continue tomorrow on live stream. So, yeah, I'd love to see you there if you're interested. Anyways, that is going to do us today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.